In this problem, we'll learn how to solve for something called the IRR, which stands for Internal Rate of Return. And inside that problem, we'll also learn about something called linear interpolation. So take a moment, pause the video, familiarize yourself with the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. So I'll start this problem the same way I like to start most engineering economics problems, and that is with a cash flow diagram. So we learn in the problem that our timeline for this problem is six years. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we also learn that um, we have a, an investment of a thousand dollars that gives an annual return for each of the six years of two hundred dollars. And by this point in this course we should be able to recognize right away that our two hundred dollars is an annuity and that the thousand dollars is a P or present worth. Usually, what happens in an engineering economics problem is that we're given an A and an interest rate and asked to solve for P, or we're given a P and an interest rate and asked to solve for A. In questions where we're asked to find the internal rate of return for a project or an investment, really what the question is asking is for us to find, find the I. Right, so in this particular problem, they actually ask us to find the internal rate of return. And all it is is, I already have an A, I have a P, what is the value of I that creates that equivalence that we've talked about in this course before? So how do I make $1,000 today, or time t equal to zero, equal to a $200 annuity for six time periods? Right? So remember our N here is equal to six. Well, most of the time we would write um, our equation, something like this, where the present value is equal to the value of the annuity times the P given A factor for some interest rate for some number of periods. For this particular problem, we would write it like this. $1,000 for our P is equal to our A of two hundred dollars times the P given A factor at some I, and I'll call this I star because we don't know what it is, and our number of years is six. Now rearranging this problem, I take divide both sides by 200, I end up with five as being equal to the compound interest factor that solves the problem. And getting to this point is quite simple. Solving for the value of i is not necessarily so simple. As you may notice on the inside cover of your textbook or in the text itself, when you look at the different uh, formulas for compound interest factors, the value of i inside those formulas cannot be solved explicitly. So it forces us to use other methods like trial and error, things like that, um, to come up with a value of i that makes the p given a factor for n equal to 6 exactly equal to 5. The way we'll approach this problem is to use a technique called linear interpolation. So if I look in the back of my engineering economics textbook and I look through the interest tables, right, I'm looking at different interest uh, values, I can find something that is pretty close. So if I, if I search through the tables, I can find a P given A factor for the 6% interest table for N equal to 6. I can find a factor that's equal to 4.9 one, seven, two. And if I look 
in the 5% table for n equal to 6, I can find a factor that's equal to 5.0756. And remember, I'm trying to find a compound interest factor that exactly equals 5. So I can conclude from the values taken from these two interest tables that the I star, the I I'm looking for that solves this problem, is somewhere between 6% and 5%. Now, if I look at these two numbers, um, they're both about the same amount away from a value of 5. So, if I were, if I wanted to be bold and make a guess, I could say, well, you know what, probably I'm going to end up with a value somewhere around, um, uh, let's say, 5.5 or halfway between 5 and 6 as the value that gives me something close to 5. That would just be an intuitive guess. But we can use a technique that assumes a linear relationship between our interest rate and the value of the compound interest factor. And this is called linear interpolation. If you look on the inside front cover of your book or in the text uh, somewhere, you'll find a formula uh, for linear interpolation. And most of the formats of the formulas for linear interpolation look something like this, where they give you x star being the value you're looking for is equal to x1 plus x2 minus x1 times y star minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1. So the x and the y are the two variables that we're, we will assume are linear, linearly related to each other. And for the most part, it's not a bad assumption with compound interest tables and compound interest factors, provided that the two numbers we use are not so far away from each other. In this particular problem, the i star, what we're looking for, will say that that is our x star. And what that means is that the x's become the interest rates that we have over here. So our x1, let's, let's choose x1 as our 6%. So we'll do it like this. And the corresponding y1 becomes the compound interest factor that resulted from using an interest rate of 6%, which is in this case, the 4.9172. Similarly, the x2 becomes my 5% interest. My y2 becomes the value of the compound interest factor when I use the 5% table. And then y star is the value that I'm looking for. That's the value I'd like the compound interest factor to be when I find the magical value um, of x star that produces this value of y star. So I'll just call that 5.0. So that's my, my target number that solves this problem. If I go ahead and plug the numbers into this formula, I get my x star is equal to my x1 which is the 6% plus my x2 minus x1. Note that this will actually give me a negative number, but it doesn't matter. In fact, you can flip these, these two um, y1, y2, x2, x1, x2, flip them around and you will get the same answer. Um, my y star minus y1, which was the 4.9172 divided by 5.0756 minus 4.9172. If you pause for a moment to think about this, what this part of the formula is doing is saying how far along the complete range between y2 and y1 is my target. So you can think of that how far, what percentage of the way along the range am I? And then take that same percentage and, and multiply it by the x range which will give me a linear, per, linearly proportional amount 
of change in x to my change in y. And then I simply add that to whatever my starting value of x is. If I work that out for this problem, I get 0 0.0548 or 5.48%. So you can see our initial guess just by looking at these numbers of somewhere around 5.5, in fact, ends up being pretty close to the answer we get using linear interpolation. So this problem um, explains how we solve for the I, called the IRR, using the technique of linear interpolation.